So what I'd like you guys to do is let's just go back real quick. I'm just going to do to introduce ellipse or hyperbolas. I'm going to do this a little bit different way, Chris. Um, I'm just going to kind of go back and review a little bit with um, ellipses, just a quick little review, and then I'm going to introduce the hyperbolas. And I've kind of breezed through a couple things, but I'm just going to kind of give you guys the main points. So the first thing when we're talking about ellipses is the main important thing is we had a major axis. And our major axis was either, either horizontal or it was vertical. And that was the, like, the major thing that we needed to find. Because if we knew that the major axis was horizontal, the center, the foci, and the vertices all lied on that, right? Where on the non-major axis was our co-vertices, all right, which was the length of B. Now remember the distance from your center to your foci was C, and the distance from your center to your vertices was A. Distance from your center to your co-vertices was B. And that's stuff we've already gone over. But we'll just go through, again, a review. Vertice, vertice, co-vertices. All right, now it's very important because sometimes if I ask you to graph the information or graph the ellipse, a lot of times I gave you different information, like the length of the minor axis, um, which is the whole length from co-vertice to co-vertice, and then you can find your length of b. Now, for this, we had two different formulas. And it was very important that when we were dealing with ellipses, always a was greater than b, right? Because a represented the distance from the center to your vertice. And your vertices lied on the major axis. The major axis was obviously larger than the minor axis, correct? Yes? OK. So to determine if it was horizontal or vertical, we looked at where the a was. So we always had x minus h squared plus y minus k squared equaled 1 for both of these formulas. And then to determine if it was horizontal, remember the a squared was always under the x, and the b squared was under the y. If it's vertical, then the b squared was under the x, and the a squared was under the y. So when we are doing, uh, or when we are doing problems with ellipses, you have to know those two formulas. And you have to know the differences. The only difference between these two formulas and these two pictures is that the a is under the x for horizontal, and the a is under the y for vertical. right? And a was always larger than b, because that represented the distance from, of your, or your distance from your center to your vertice. OK? All right. The other thing that was very important about this was a lot of times we were given the value of a and b, and we needed to find c. Or sometimes we're given the value of c and we needed an a and we needed to find b. So we came up with c squared equals a squared minus b squared. You have to know that as well because you're not always going to be provided all the information. You will be using that formula. All right, and don't confuse it with the Pythagorean theorem, but you will be using that formula to go ahead and um, find the ellipse. So are we OK with everything on the ellipse side? I know there's obviously graphing and stuff like that, but that's at least the general information. Okay. Now, the main, major important thing about this is notice how the foci are in, inside the ellipse. right? Your kind of parabolas or your kind of sections now are focusing towards your focus. So what we're going to go over today is now what happens if we take the fo foci and put them on the outside of the vertices. And that's exactly what we're going to do. We're still going to have major and minor axes, which we're going to call a different name. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the foci outside. So that's still going to be our center. Here will be our vertices. And now we're going to put the foci on the outside. So when we're creating these, these are what we call our hyperbolas. All right, and there's a couple different characteristics of the hyperbolas that we have to make sure we're aware of. All right. Now, first of all, we still have horizontal and vertical. I kept them kind of the same. But rather than calling them major axes, now what we call them, oh, I forgot to do this one, is a transverse axis. So if I say the transverse axis is horizontal, you know that the hyperbola is going to be opening left and right. 
If I say the transverse axis is vertical, you know that the hyperbola is going to be opening up and down, very similar to the major axis. All right? But we call it the transverse axis for hyperbolas. Um, as far as the distance for your center to your vertice, I'm going to do these in a different color, it's the same as the ellipse. That's not working. From your center to your vertice is still A. From your center to your foci is still C. And we'll have B up here, which are going to be some points that we are going to use. So what was nice about the B for ellipse is that was your co-vertices, right? And that helped you graph actually what the ellipse was. We don't graph, we don't plot the points P, B, but we're going to use them to graph our asymptotes, which we are going to encase. So the value to your um, co-vertices is still going to be B. All right. So that's the same for the other one. I'm just going to save a little time and only do it on one. All right. Now, here's where it gets a little bit confusing that I have to make sure I'm very, very clear with you on. When we are talking about ellipse, we always had A was greater than B. And to determine if the major axis was horizontal or vertical, we just looked at where A was. Correct? Well, now, for an ellipse, A is not always going to be larger than B. Sometimes it will be. Sometimes it won't. So we have to be very careful with this. But what I want you guys to understand is these formulas always, for an ellipse, it's always a squared, your minus your b squared. Always it's a and then b. Always a and then b. All right? So when you're provided an ellipse, and you guys can easily identify an ellipse, by noticing these are subtraction, right? Instead of adding the two, they're subtraction. So when you see a subtraction, you know you're talking dealing with a hyperbola. And when you're dealing with a hyperbola, it's always a squared minus b squared. All right? So therefore, it's very easy to identify the a, right? It's just always in front, and then there's the b squared. So don't look at, because sometimes we'll have something where the b is larger than the a. So don't confuse that saying, oh, since the larger number has to be a. That is only working with the ellipse. Here, it's always a squared minus b squared. Now, when your x coordinate of your center is over the a, though, just like an ellipse, you're going to have a horizontal hyperbola, a horizontal transverse axis. Then, if my, um, my x coordinate of my center is over the b, then it will be a vertical transverse axis. All right. So I wrote down the ellipses so you guys can kind of make the distinction. There's not a lot of differences, but there are some very important ones that you guys need to see that the only thing changing between the horizontal and vertical for ellipse is where A is. And you can always identify A because it's the largest, you know, your larger number. For the differences between the hyperbolas, the only difference is the x and the y coordinates. And when your x is over the A, it's, it's horizontal. And when your x is over the B, it's going to be a vertical. Does that make sense? Any questions on that? All right. Now, the other thing that's very important is, again, like ellipses, you're going to have to find A, B, and C. And I'll show you why B, how we're going to find the ellipses, or how find the asymptotes. But um, to do that, we're not going to use this formula anymore. We actually have to use a different formula. So again, we would derive this by using the Pythagorean theorem. But this one is C squared equals A squared plus B squared. And a very easy way to just kind of remember this, ellipses, you're adding, right? The formula, you subtract. Hyperbolas, you're subtracting. The formula, you add. OK? So just kind of remember it's always like the opposite with the formulas. OK? But this is going to be the formula if I maybe provided you A and C. Maybe I said, hey, here's the distance of the foci from the center. Here's the distance from the vertices from the center. You need to find B. You would use this formula to go ahead and do that. OK, Caroline? Now, why are we going to use B? How is B going to help us? Well, here you can see your kind of two parabolas came into each other, right? And they focused a nice, they made a nice little ellipse. For here, what we actually have is asymptotes. So to determine what the asymptotes are, what we're going to do is we're going to make a box with our A and our B.
And I'll provide you guys with the formulas to actually find this as well. But the easiest way to graph the asymptotes is determine what A and B is and to create a little box. Does everybody kind of see those boxes? I know it's in orange, so it's kind of faint. Um, so now, to create the asymptotes, that's where, the, that's where your um, hyperbolas are going to approach. Now, we just go from corner to corner, and we've created our asymptotes. So if I was actually going to correctly redraw these, remember asymptotes are where your graph is going to approach, right? So actually, it looks something more like this. All right, because your asymptotes, you're, that's where your parabolas are approaching. All right, and um, if I had, let's see if I can remember. I don't remember. Horizontals be over A. OK, I forgot the formulas. But if you want to know the actual formulas of how to find that, y equals k plus or minus b over a times x minus h. And the formula for this asymptote is y equals k plus or minus a over b times x minus h. All right, so the differences, ladies and gentlemen, from a hyperbola to an ellipse, it's all the same as far as center, foci, and vertices. The only difference is. Now, your foci is going to be outside of your vertices. All right? We are going to have to find the value of b when you're graphing to, to apply the asymptotes. Or you could also simply use this equation and then graph it using, you know, write it then in slope-intercept form, and then actually graph the asymptotes. And the other difference is the formulas are going to be different. But besides that, the type of problems that you guys are going to have for your test and on your homework are going to be all exactly the same. Is there any last questions, anybody? wants me to go over with this. But as far as doing the problems and setting it up, it's this exact same thing as what we did with ellipses. Just a little bit differences in the graphs and the equations. Nothing. Chris, you didn't take any notes. Why didn't you take any notes? Got it? <laughs>